I hope everybody knows what time it is. Today's video is about Rumpopolo, which I have given the binomial name Carbonicus Pelargorhynchus, which means coal clawed stork bill, because it has these big, big long claws on its forelimbs, hangs out in a relatively carboniferous area, that means coal producing, and has this huge curved bill that it uses for feeding on little benthic animals, just like a stork. Now, at first, the least realistic thing about Rompopolo might seem to be its bizarre series of inflatable air sacs that run along the length of its entire body. And surprisingly, it's not that crazy. Air sacs are found in a variety of reptiles, most notably the dinosaurs. If we take a look into the notebook that I use for my job here, you'll see that I've laid out the different air sac dynamics across a couple groups of Sauruskian dinosaurs which Rumpopolo most likely isn't, but it is still probably an archosaur, and therefore it can be used as a model in this situation. Now, these air sacs, or diverticulae, are divided into separate sections throughout the body and sit on top of and also inside the skeleton. If you'll see here, there is space within the vertebrae for air sacs to fill out, so as the animal breathes, it's moving air through its skeletal system. This not only helps keep the animal's skeleton light, but still strong, it also makes them better at breathing because there's just more respiratory tissue sitting there. That's part of the reason why dinosaurs could have gotten so big in the first place. It's not because oxygen was particularly high in the Mesozoic, uh, it's more likely just that their respiratory systems were so much more efficient and their bodies were lighter as a consequence of that as well. Rumpopolo actually pretty solidly follows the layout of the respiratory uh, diverticulae of most dinosaurs. You can see it has this big chunk up by its head, then one in the center body as well as its main lungs, and then it has these big caudal diverticulae which are probably derived from those that are attached to the hips of dinosaurs. Assuming we're going for a dinosaur Rumpopolo, which is still implausible, but you know, it's our best analog. One thing that I found super interesting about Rumpopolo when I was looking at it is that it doesn't have any real nostrils. Instead, it seems like the areas that would be occupied by its nostrils that it would breathe out of actually feed back into these tubes, and so the air that it's exhaling is being used to inflate the diverticulae in its head. Those diverticulae in turn either feed out through this incredibly long tongue glottis thing that it uses to skewer its prey, which are the crude shell crabs of the oil well basin, and you can see it doing that right here, where it comes up, it sticks its, you know, tail part into the ground, and all these crabs flow to the surface, and then it's sticking them. It's sticking them on the glottis of its tongue, and it's pushing that glottis through them to suck them back into its mouth. Which I have illustrated right here. So this, this tongue glottis is hard, and it's piercing the, the crab's exoskeleton. Additionally, Rumpopolo doesn't have any eyelids. It seems like the scales that would serve as eyelids are clear and just fused down directly over the eyes, uh, you know, as eye protection. And this is not uncommon. A lot of animals have fused shut eyelids like geckos, and Rumpopolo could reasonably moisturize them because it has that long, flexible, muscular tongue. It also constantly bathes in oil, which would probably keep them relatively resistant to uh, any sort of drying out or damage. One thing that's really interesting is that the behavior of the gases is different dependent on what diverticulae they're in. The ones that come out of the tail are non-toxic and they just seem to, you know, be a compressed gas that sort of shoots out of this little telson here. Whereas the ones that come out of the, uh, the rostrum, and more particularly this, this extended glottis tongue situation, uh, are toxic. And this toxin could either be just straight up toxic gas from the oil well basin, which I find a little bit unlikely because even though there is toxic gas in oil fields, the player doesn't really take any damage anywhere because of that, so it's nowhere near as concentrated. However, one thing that is possible is that Rumpopolo is eating something toxic. Maybe it's supplementing its diet with toadstools, or maybe these crabs are eating toadstools. It's producing this venom on its own, and then it's aerosolizing it by exposing it to high pressure air, which I personally find more convincing, especially because the gas that comes out of its mouth is a, you know, distinct purple color. Another thing that's super interesting about Rumpopolo is its rostrum, its beak, or its ramphotheca, which is part of its name. It is very similar to that of a stork, but it has these two sets of paired pseudo teeth like we get in Pelagornithidae. Now, pelagornithids are an extinct group of seabirds that have these bony projections underneath their beaks that come through their beaks and look sort of like pseudo teeth. And as you can see here, they're not all equal in size, just like the serrations on the beak of Rumpopolo. 
So it has these long, sort of wide, kicked out ones towards the back, and it has these narrow, widely spaced ones in the front that are much shorter. One thing that I have to commend the devs on with Rompopolo is the design of its feet. They are so, so perfect for an animal that lives in this environment. They're widely spaced. Um, it's a, it has a tridactyl foot arrangement, so it's got this dew claw that's sitting off the ground. And it has just these amazing little toe pads. It has claws that aren't like crazy impractical or oversized. This isn't an animal that's killing anything with its feet, so its claws are fairly reduced. And that's that's just super amazing. So here I've done a little bit of a, a skeletal diagram of the feet showing where the uh, the metatarsals are. And then you have the, um, the little dew claw that comes off to the side here and then all three of the digits. Point being, this animal is going to be very capable of moving around the oil, both when it's crouched down and submerged under the oil because those toe pads are going to act like uh, like the feet of the American coot, which has these same sort of uh, palmate structures on them that aren't truly palmate like the webs of a lot of ducks, but they just have these widened segments that help them move around in an aquatic environment and also allow them to, you know, just maintain a higher surface area when they're walking on unstable sediment, just like from Popolo. So that's amazing. That's another great real world analog to this animal. Now, the arms are something that a lot of people think are totally crazy out of the blue because we just do not get a lot of one-fingered animals around. I mean, obviously we have the birds, but everyone knows birds aren't real, so let's look for some analogs in the fossil record for this sort of structure. There is an animal with arms almost exactly like this. It's called Mononychus, and it also specializes in eating very small prey. There's a lot of talk about Mononychus actually having an extending tongue, just like Rumpopolo, because it would have been a specialized insect eater, and it would have used these single-digit clawed hands to, you know, dig out insects from bark or uh, that sort of environment. So it's not exactly shooting gas into the ground and forcing crabs to come to the surface, but those long claws may have evolved before Rumpopolo took advantage of its gas system to dig out those crabs. And if they're living in more solid ground, having that long single picking digit uh, is very helpful when you're going after small prey, just like the, the single long finger of an eye eye that it uses to tap on trees and then dig out bugs. So that's really consistent with um, Rumpopolo's diet. Rumpopolo is what's called a durophage, which means it eats things that usually have the defense of being difficult to eat. And it's kind of strange how it does this. It doesn't really seem to break them apart with its teeth or jaws like any other known uh, durophage. For example, Globidens has these great big round teeth that it used to crush ammonite shells. Rompopolo instead probably relies on some internal chemical reaction to break them down. The main obstacle in breaking down invertebrate shells is calcium carbonate because it's incredibly strong. However, if it's in an acidic solution, it will absolutely break down because uh, it's made of basic material. And so if Rompopolo just had a particularly acidic stomach, it would be able to melt down those juicy, juicy crab shells to get at the stuff inside. It also weakens the shell's composition with its tongue when it skewers them. Uh, and it is mentioned uh, in one of the Rompopolo item descriptions that some toxin or venom within its mouth begins to weaken its prey before it's uh, eaten. So I take that to mean that it's using some kind of probably acidic solution to start to break down those crab shells. Overall, Rumpopolo is a super, super interesting animal. Um, it has grown on me a lot. I didn't initially like its design very much because I thought it was a little overly, like, creepy and scary. But the more and more I see it, the more I see how kind of cute it is. And it really fulfills that niche of an animal that looks frightening on the surface, but is really just like a big teddy bear. I really want to give this thing a hug now. Um, it's so amazing to have representation for durophages and sort of non-traditional uh, predatory dynamics in the Monster Hunter world. The devs have done an amazing job with this design specifically, and I really love it. Please let me know which monsters you would like to see next, uh, and thank you for watching all the way through if that's what you've done. Have a great day.